There was a feud between her and Elizabeth Taylor. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Welcome to Ask the Beauty Advisor, a podcast that answers your health and beauty questions. Hosted by health and beauty advisor, Deanna Lynn. Hey there, thank you for tuning in to Ask the Beauty Advisor, the podcast where we talk about all things health and beauty. This is a great podcast for anybody who loves health and beauty. It's also a great podcast for the beauty professional. I'm your host, Deanna, and today I have a very fun and exciting show for you. Now, this week I have a very special guest on. I have Ms. Sandy DeRose. Sandy's an author. She's written several books, but the book we're going to be focusing on today is her book entitled Anti-Aging Secrets of Hollywood. I'm going to go ahead and let Sandy tell you a little bit more about herself once we get into the interview. But first, I'd like to remind you that next week, the newsletter goes out, the monthly newsletter. If you haven't signed up yet, you're really missing out. You're missing out on extra health and beauty tips, healthy recipes, do-it-yourself beauty treatments, free offers, and a lot more. So now, if you're listening to the show on iTunes, all you have to do is click on the icon right there as a sign-up link right in the show notes. You won't even have to leave iTunes. You can sign up right there without even missing a word of today's episode. Now, if you're not anywhere where you can see that link, you'll have to go to the blog, askthebeautyadvisor.com, or go over, if you're a Facebook person, you can go over to Facebook, Ask the Beauty Advisor on Facebook. All right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get this show started. Hey, Sandy, it's great to have you here today. I'm really excited about today's show. Thank you for having me, Deanna. It's always a pleasure for me to have somebody like you on the show that's so passionate about health and beauty. But let's go ahead and jump right into our topic because we have a lot to talk about and we don't have a lot of time. So let's start with me asking you why you feel that health and beauty go hand in hand. Well, it's that old adage, you are what you eat, and it may not be that way or show up when you're young, but as you get older, those signs of not really taking care of yourself and being healthy really start to show um, on your skin, in your hair, your nails, and so forth. And um it's not as easy to cover it up anymore. And then the damage is done. So now you, you really have trouble trying to reverse anything. You're so right, Sandy. And I think when people are really healthy on the inside, it shows on the outside. They have a sparkle in their eyes. They have a luster to their skin. Being healthy on the inside does reflect beauty outwardly. When you are hydrated and you're sleeping, and you are just going to go. Oh, you're so right about that. I know this even for myself. I drink a lot of coffee and don't get enough water. I start getting the dark under eye circles. I'm plugged with dark under eye circles as it is, but they really look bad once I get dehydrated. I really think that some of us don't get enough water. I know from personal experience, if I drink those eight ounces or eight glasses of water every day, there's a big difference in my appearance. There's a big difference in my skin. Now, I hate drinking water, so it's very difficult for me, and I forget to do it. It's really surprising that just water can make that big of a change in your appearance. It certainly does. I'm a firm believer of that. Sandy, can you tell us exactly what it is that you do, and maybe tell us what you're the most proud of? Well, Deanna, um, I've started in this field, I feel like, as a teenager, because I was so interested in beauty and health and making little concoctions in my room and, mm-hmm. and you know, just having fun with it. But it became more serious when I saw my grandmother really age and it did go hand in hand with her health too, because as her health became poor in her fifties, um, her skin just aged tremendously. And I, as a teenager, it frightened me. I didn't want to look like that. I did a lot of research. You could find me at the library. I would be in a corner with reference books regarding herbs and aromatherapy and anything I could really get my hands on. As time marched on, 
um, I started seeing an alternative medicine doctor, and within a couple years, I was working for him. Um, I'm, they consider me his right hand. I do his product development and um, have just been entrenched in it for the last 10 years. Wow, that's really interesting. You certainly have an impressive resume. So you're probably just the right person to answer this question. Isn't aging really just all about genetics or our genes? I think that there is a component of genetics but um, that can also be combated with all the technology and knowledge that we have today. There are certain things that you know already by being tested that you might be predisposed to, and you can definitely take um, action in correcting anything that you might have because of genetics. For example, um, if you say your mother has um, diabetes, you can certainly know at an early age if you are pre-diabetic. You know, we don't have to wait until we're full-blown anything anymore because of all the science and technology. Now, my mother really hasn't aged all that well herself. Sorry, Mom. Just like you, I was afraid that I was going to age like my mother, and at an early age, I became obsessed with skincare. My sister, on the other hand, who's pretty natural, she lived down at the beach, she never wore a lot of makeup, never did a lot of skincare, stayed out in the sun, she's already had to have a facelift. And she is much younger than me. So I think that by taking care of your skin and your health at an early age, you can eliminate some of what may be predestined. But Sandy, what I'm really interested in is your books. Now, I know you've told me earlier that you have two books that you've written that have already been published and one more on the way. What was your inspiration for writing books, and who did you write the books for? Well, after, after years of um, working with Dr. Sears and um, being around all of the uh, research and the writing, I wanted to have a go at, at writing. I've always had an interest to be a writer. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, I could try, maybe I could try here in this forum and see what happens. And so sure enough, they gave me a column for his newsletter, his skincare newsletter, and people liked my voice and they, they liked how I told a story. So that led me into developing my own website and creating my own little eBooks is what I call them, special reports. And um, so I really wrote it for people so that I could maybe share more of my knowledge with more people than I'm able to in my circle of friends. Nice. That's really awesome. Now, Sandy, would you give us the title of your books and also a brief description of each one of your books? Okay, sure. Um, the first book is uh, called 10 Years Younger, Recipes for Your Face, with a tagline, No Blender Required. The reason I wanted to add No Blender Required was because I don't want to be bothered with any at-home recipes that's complicated. So I feel that a lot of people are like that too. If something becomes too complicated with too many ingredients and too many steps and you're messing up your whole kitchen, you're not going to do it. In this day and age, we need to have something easy, something that, okay, I'm going to watch an hour of TV tonight. And so let me you know, whip up this egg mask and slap it on my face. So now I'm doing something for myself. I'm relaxing. Plus I'm doing a little mask and with very little effort. You can you know, see nice results. The second book I wrote was um, Anti-Aging Secrets of Hollywood. And that I wanted to write was because I had stumbled upon so much research on old, you know, uh, deceased Hollywood starlets, aging Hollywood stars today, that they are doing things that don't require a lot of money and not surgery or injections. A lot of them are using their their grandmother's old, you know, hair masks and facial masks and teeth whiteners. So I thought that there was maybe a desire and a, a want for other people to know what they were doing as well. Well, I think a lot of people will be surprised to know that movie stars do use these natural techniques, these homemade recipes, or or as you say, their grandma's recipes. 
Well, in the old Hollywood days, they didn't really have the technology. They didn't have the advancements in like skincare things like Botox and peptides and all that kind of stuff. I find it extremely interesting to know the secrets of the old Hollywood movie stars, what they did to look so beautiful on the screen. You know, they looked gorgeous on the silver screen. And I think it's fascinating what some of their techniques were. So I really am excited to know a little bit more about your anti-aging secrets of Hollywood book. But let's go back to your first book for a moment, if you don't mind. Um, Look 10 years younger without a blender. Can you, and I know this is putting you on the spot, can you, off the top of your head, give us one of the quick homemade recipes out of that book? Just so the listeners can kind of get an idea of what your book's about. Yes, I have a great one, actually. Um, A lot of people ask me about lightening dark spots. And um, I have found a simple uh, scrub that I call the cocoa scrub. That's just two tablespoons of cocoa powder and a tablespoon of sugar and three tablespoons of coconut oil. You rub this, you mix it together and then scrub your face. Leave it on for a few extra minutes while the caffeine goes to work on your collagen. And um, then you rinse well and then you dab with a little bit of lemon juice. And that helps to lighten your dark spots and boost your collagen. And the coconut oil is like antiviral, antibacterial, and so then that moisturizes. Oh, very good. Excellent. That's brilliant. I've never heard of that one. Thank you for sharing that with us. So now the book that you're working on right now at the present time, can you briefly tell us a little bit about that book? Do you have a title for that book yet? I do have a title. In fact, it's everybody gets um, two articles a week when you sign up to my newsletter. Uh, The first article on Monday is anti-aging hacks. And so I go through many different hacks that you can do for uh, beauty and for health. So um, I've compiled 101 anti-aging hacks, the best ones uh, to date, and have put them together in a book. Cool. So then I guess the book is entitled Anti-Aging Hacks. Yes, 101. 101 Anti-Aging Hacks. Cool. I really love your titles. They're very catchy. Can't wait for that book to come out. Let's go back to your book, Anti-Aging Secrets of Hollywood. Can you share some of those Hollywood secrets with us? Who are some of the well-known people that are in your book? I think um, people will recognize most of the celebrities. Um, I've got J-Lo, Susan Lucci, Marilyn Monroe, Cindy Crawford, Katherine Hepburn, Jackie O, Demi Moore, and the list goes on. Wow, you've got all their beauty secrets in one book. That's pretty amazing. Well, there's a couple of great little secrets that I was surprised about, um, and I was able to dig up some things from the celebrities hairdressers as well as their makeup artists. Uh, One quick tip just to um, keep the moisture in your hair is when you're done washing your hair is to close it up with cold water. What the cold water does, it closes up the cuticle and it helps to add shine to your hair. Another tip is a um, honey and yogurt mask. The yogurt has salicylic acid in it So that kind of makes the skin shed. So you're exfoliating. And the honey actually is antibacterial and um, antiviral. And so if you have any kind of uh, impurities, that's going to zap them. And also the honey is moisturizing. Now, when you are doing a beauty treatment and you're using honey, is there a particular honey or is there a type of honey that you would recommend using? Well, I like to use organic products whenever possible because you're putting this on your skin and your body is absorbing and can absorb, you know, pesticides and anything that isn't good for you. I would use um, raw organic honey. And actually the recipe is a half a cup of full fat yogurt. You can use Greek. You can use plain yogurt. 
and two tablespoons of raw honey. That's it. It's so simple. Mix well, apply to clean skin, and leave on for 20 minutes. Now, let's say we wanted to use our serum because everybody's using serums now. Should we put the serum on under the mask, the honey and yogurt mask? Should we mix it in with the mask? How would you recommend that we integrate a serum? And I would do any application of serums after you've after. rinsed the mask. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, our moisturizer goes on top of that. Wow. Sounds like an excellent treatment. We should all be giving ourselves one of those once a week. Yes. Exactly. See, you know the routine. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> now, is there one particular beauty ritual that all the stars seem to be doing that they all know about or they all seem to be doing? Is there any commonalities? Um, let's see, off the top of my head. Um, celebrities really wear a lot. They really, all of them talk so much about their sunscreen. I know that sounds boring, but it's very, very important to protect your face with sunscreen and your hands even. Even sitting by a window. If you're at your office all day, eight hours a day, and you sit by a window, you're getting the ultraviolet rays, and that will definitely aid your skin. Yeah, well, sunscreen's very important. But I'm glad you brought up the point about your hands because I think the hands are neglected. I think a lot of times people are very consistently using sunscreen on their face, but they absolutely forget about their hands. One of the most damaging things that you can do to your hands is driving. Just having your hands on the steering wheel with the sun coming in and your hands have no protection, you're going to end up with a lot of wrinkles and a lot of age spots. In your book, you mentioned Jacqueline Kennedy, who is an American icon and was renowned for her sense of style and beauty. I also see her as a very stylish and beautiful woman. Would you be able to share any of her beauty secrets with us today? Yes. I know that she really took care of her hair, and she would um, wear, you know, the scarf was more than just a fashion statement. And um, she did not like um, cotton sheets. She used satin sheets, for again, for her hair. And um, believe it or not, the silk scarf, I remember this now, too, that she would wear that to bed. Really? I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Now that we're talking old-time Hollywood stars, what do you know about Marilyn Monroe? What were some of her beauty secrets? Yes, but you know what? They did their grandma's secrets. In fact, uh, Marilyn, she would take a progesterone before, you know, anybody really knew about progesterone. I found that very interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I wonder if she was getting it from her doctor or she was even getting it in this country. I really, who really knew about that in those days? Um, I don't, you know, that I don't know. You never really heard much about women taking progesterone in those days, but, you know, maybe it has been around longer than we really know. So she took progesterone, huh? Hmm, that's interesting. You know, she didn't really even live that long. Wasn't she only about 35 years old when she passed away? Right. But she was taking care of herself because of who she was. Right. And um, the other thing I found interesting was that... um, There was a feud between her and Elizabeth Taylor. And the one thing that they both had in common, their beauty secret, is that they would shave their faces. Shave their faces? Wow, that's a surprise. I'm really surprised that they even knew that much about exfoliation in those days. Yes. And nowadays, they're doing a lot of um, spas are doing dermaplaning and dermatologists as well. And that's been around for 30 plus years, really gaining a lot of popularity again. Dermaplating. Well, I've heard of that, but I'm not real familiar with it. Is it like shaving the skin? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing is, too, Deanna, that you won't grow black, thick hair because the hair is different. Those are vellus hairs, the peach fuzz, Mm -hmm. and so it doesn't grow grow back and grow in thick like um, a man's beard. Yep. Most of us are afraid to shave our face because we're afraid of the hair growing back thicker and darker. Men shave their face all the time, and they say that's the secret to why men age better than women. 
Although I don't know if that's so true today. I think women are staying younger looking longer than they used to. I don't know. Seems that way to me. The older I get, the better everyone else looks. Well, now we're just about out of time and you have a generous free offer for today's listeners, some free books. So why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners how they can receive some of your books for free? Well, sure. Um, As far as uh, 10 Years Younger Recipes for Your Face, that book is a giveaway on my website when you sign up to my newsletter. Um, Also, I never, just so you know, I never rent, sell, or trade anybody's email. I keep it protected. It's for my use only to send uh, my health and beauty information. So that you can go directly to my website, which is www.antiagenaturally.com. And then for your listeners today, I thought it would be nice to give them a special treat and give them the Anti-Aging Secrets of Hollywood. And that you could get either email me from directly from my website, or I can give you the email address and you can send it to me and just say that you heard about, you know, heard about the book from Deanna and I will be happy to send you the book. Wow. Thank you, Sandy. That's very generous of you. Excellent. We love free stuff. All right. So would you feel comfortable sharing your email here on the show so that the listeners can, to make it a little bit easier for the listeners, they can email you and request the book? Sure. It's just Sandy at antiagenaturally.com. Okay, so that's Sandy at antiagenaturalskin.com. All of Sandy's information will be located in the show notes. Don't forget to visit her website. She's got a lot of great and informative information on that website. She's also got a lot of do-it-yourself beauty recipes that I wouldn't want you to miss out on. All right, so there you have it. Sandy, it was a pleasure to have you on today. I want to thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope you'll come back. I hope once you get your new book published, you'll come back and tell us all about it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Deanna. That was awesome, Miss Lynn. Thank you, Hazel. I'm glad you liked the show, but I'm running a little late. Can you help me close it out? That's all we got, folks. (laughs) Oh, Hazel, you're so cute. The Beauty Advisor is a part of the Beauty Radio Network. If you have a podcast or need help in starting a podcast and would like to be a part of a free, supportive network, then learn more by contacting Deanna at beautyradionetwork.com.